I've just now started getting into our new Pope. So I'm going to share with you a little bit of things. And there are many sources to check and double check and recheck. But, as you can find, Pietro. That means Peter. So you can look it up and find out that uh, his original name was Francesco di Pietro di Bernardoni. So you have a Peter. Isn't that an oddity? And you can go through and read about him. St. Francis of Assisi. But I wanted to show everybody who didn't know that you can find it you can see it for yourself you can uh, well if you don't trust me you can tr put it in a translator and find out and it will say Peter now we have something here <coughs> I'm gonna say that Tom Horn and Steve Quayle are going to be talking again and making something for us probably. And this is uh, Horn talking to Quayle. This is off of SteveQuayle.com alerts. And he's telling him that he'll be back Monday and then gone all week but he wants you to check this out. And he's describing how the prophecy was absolutely nailed. Here is the Jorge Mario Bergoglio is Italian, Roman, and a Jesuit. Very important aspect of the prediction in our book because we said the name Petrus Mo Romanus from the prophecy implies this pope will reaffirm the authority of the Roman pontiff over the church and emphasize the supremacy of the Roman Catholic faith and Roman Catholic Church above all of the religions and denominations and its authority over all Christians and all peoples of the world. Concerning the Jesuits, their order was organized to stop Protestantism from spreading and to preserve communion with Rome and the successor of Peter. That's also another note from Wikipedia, the 35th General Congregation of the Society of Jesus convened on 5 January 2008, elected Adolfo Nicolás as the new Superior General. On 19 January 2008, one month later after that, Benedict, Pope then, received members of the General Congregation and urged them to continue on the path of the mission in full fidelity to your original charism, and asked them to reflect so as to rediscover the fullest meaning of your characteristic fourth vow of obedience to the successor of Peter. And for that he told them to adhere totally to the word, word of God and to the magisterium's task of preserving the integral truth and unity of Catholic doctrine. This clear identity, according to the Pope, is important so that many others may share in your ideals and join you effectively and enthusiastically. The congregation responded with a formal declaration titled, With New Fervor and Dianism, the Society of Jesus responds to the call of Benedict whereby they confirm the society's fidelity to the Pope. The fourth vow is a blood oath according to some ex-Catholics. And you have your little website here, you can go and look at that. As a result, Gullio makes the perfect Pope to fulfill the second book. Chardinian Jesuit predictions who argue in favor of coming alien savior. Here's some food for thought. This Pope was elected on 313.13 at 8.13. Wow. How's that for coincidence, huh? 13, 13, and 13. That's uh, pretty wild. Pretty wild numerology. So those are just some interesting things I've found so far. Now, from what I've seen so far, all things mainly have sounded good about 
Francis. And time will tell. Time will tell. These things going on. And then you'll know. She can't cast a blind eye and a deaf ear to this. Now this is a, a different kind of report, and you'll have to make your own mind up. <clears throat> I only bring these things to you, and I can urge you one way or another. But ultimately, it's up to you to make up your own mind and do your own thing. But this document, this writing, and this article is saying the just paint him in a different light and you know I've already read some stuff that there's supposedly intentionally trying to uh, put him down and make him look bad but but this article goes to say there's some documents that he may have betrayed a couple of priests who were kidnapped and tortured by the military junta in Ar Argentina and uh, they supposedly I've seen some documents that appear to show this new pope secretly collaborated with the dictatorship when he was head of the Jesuits during the dirty war that started in the 70s. Now, a report by Orlando Iorio, 27 pages, he was one of the kidnapped priests. He accuses Pope Francis of spreading secretly dangerous rumors about him and a colleague while they while he was promising to protect them and support them. Now the second document, confidential memo written in seventy nine, appears to reveal that Francis informed Genta officials that Father Yorio and Francisco Jalix were suspected of collaborating with guerrillas and that Jalix was accused of encouraging dissent among a congregation of nuns. Francis, who was chosen as the new pope, had been accused of effectively handling, handing the priest over to the regime's death squads by failing to quash rumors they were dissidents. Now Francis denies claims he was in league with the generals who kidnapped and murdered thousands of Argentines, including pregnant women, during their seven-year rule, but the documents unearthed in Buenos Aires suggest he was complicit with the regime both before and after the two priests were seized in 1976. Iorio wrote this formal report to the Jesuit hierarchy in Rome in 1977, a year after he was released from a military prison addressing it to Father Moore, the chaplain to the Society of Jesus in Rome, giving a chilling first-hand account of how the priests were seized by 200 armed troops, drugged, tortured, held for five months, and dumped half-naked in a field. Describes how Iorio and Jalix became convinced Francis had betrayed them, ignoring their desperate pleas to protect them from the military. Two men suspected of collaborating with the guerrillas because of their work among the poor in Buenos Aires slums. Shortly before they were seized, they were dismissed from the Jesuit order by Francis. And Iorio wrote in a report, rumors emerged about our participation with the guerrillas. As things were in Argentina, a claim like that coming from important mouths as the Jesuits are, could plain and simply signify our death. Forces of the extreme right had already machine gunned a priest in his house, and kidnapped, tortured, and left for dead another. Both of them were living in poor towns. We'd received various warnings along the lines that we should take care. Father Jellix personally spoke with several Jesuits to warn them of the situation and make them take note of the danger. We'd also spoken about this with Father Broglio, or excuse me, Bergoglio, making him see above all that my life had been put in serious danger. And in December of 1975, given the continuing rumors about my participation with the guerrillas, Father Jalik spoke seriously again with Francis. He recognized the seriousness of the situation, promised to put a stop to the rumors, and hurry up and speak to people from the armed forces to testify on their innocence. But Iorio claims Francis not only failed to squash the rumors, he actively spread them among Jesuits, and they began to suspect his honesty. 
According to the Oreo's account, Francis wrote a letter to Argentine Archbishop Miguel Responti outlining serious accusations against the two priests. It's not clear if Francis was making the allegation himself or passing him on. They'd been made by others. But, Iorio wrote, he went to speak to Francis and he denied it. He said his report was completely favorable and that Respondi was elderly and sometimes got confused. Iorio described the horror of being kidnapped, tortured, and interrogated at a prison at the Navy School of Mechanics in the Argentine capital. 5,000 people were murdered during the dictatorship. He wrote for five months, Jalex and I were chained by the feet and hands, had our eyes covered, totally incommunicado. First four or five days I went without eating and drinking, without going to the bathroom. A month and a half later I was able to change my dirty clothes. On the sixth day they put me together with Jalex. They started giving me food and I was able to go to the bathroom. Norio said he was drugged and interrogated, accused of being a gorilla and having sexual relations with a female catechist. A public outcry over the priest meant they were eventually freed, dumped semi-naked from a helicopter in a field outside Buenos Aires on October 23rd. The damning report was handed to the Mail on Sunday by leading Argentine author and human rights activist Horatio Verbitsky, who began investigating Francis shortly after he was named Archbishop of Buenos Aires in 1998 given to him by Iorio's family after the priest died from natural causes in the year 2000. Iorio's claims are vigorously denied by Francis. Last week, the Vatican spokesman said there's never been a credible concrete accusation against him. There have been many declarations of how much he did for many people to protect them from the military dictatorship. Verbitsky has also given the Mail on Sunday a copy of a foreign ministry memo from 1979 suggesting Francis continued to collaborate with the regime even after two priests were freed. The type note over four paragraphs appears to outline Francis's criticism of Jalex to a government official and gave reasons why the priest, who was then living in exile in a German monastery, should be refused a new passport. Francis told the official that Jalex was suspected of working with guerrillas and of encouraging dissident among a group of nuns. The official wrote, these facts were supplied by Francis himself. A signature to the note was a special recommendation not to grant his request for a new passport. A stamp foreign ministry paper dated 20 December 1979 reveals the passport application was then refused because of Jalek's previous record. Parentheses, are, uh, <coughs> as you can see, highlighted. The new pope last month accused of links to officials who seized as many as 500 newborn babies from their mothers to be adopted by supporters of the junta. Estela de la Corarda, a woman whose pregnant sister went missing during the dictatorship, produced evidence last week the church suggested Francis could help her quest for the truth. He alleged to have signed to have a priest to investigate the case. Uh, she claims the priest later told her her sister had given birth to a daughter and that it would be impossible to return the child to the family. She should be given to too important of a family. And there's some documents here. Francis claims he had no knowledge of the babies being stolen until the end of the dictatorship. He insisted he, instruct, he instructed Jalex and Yorio to give up their work in the slums for their own safety. I did what I could with the age and little influence I had. Claims he held secret meetings with uh, military chief Vidalia to appeal for the release. His version of events backed by a judge who investigated the atrocities. 2010, Francis testified for four hours as a witness in the investigation. Uh, yesterday, German, uh, Judge German Castelli told the newspaper, Argentine newspaper, it's totally false to say that Francis handed over the priest. We analyze it, listen to the version. So, it's quite an article. Like I say, you just have to make up your own mind. Do your own research. And I think you should. There may be some things that you need to know.